So Brad, tell me some of your influences and attraction to both art and cartooning. What were your earliest influences? Well, I always, uh, the earliest influences I remember directly in cartooning were before I could learn to read. They had a couple of strips in the paper. One was called Henry and the other one was called Ferdinand and they were wordless. So they were kind of like a, a little silent film. And so since I didn't know how to read yet, but I could see those, the, the images that intrigued me, how they could uh, tell you a little story without there any words being involved. But even at uh, four or five years old, I could understand the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. And uh, that was really interesting to me. Did you start mimicking the cartoons, start drawing and copying what you saw in the cartoons? And that's how you started your artistic process? or? I actually, the first stuff that I really copied was comic books. You know, I started uh, uh, reading, I got hooked on Marvel comic books when I was a kid in uh, late grade school. And so I would, and the biggest influence in that was a guy named Steve Ditko that drew Spider-Man. I really liked his drawing style. And I gravitated out of comic books. I lost interest in them uh, towards the end of junior high school. They got more expensive than cigarettes did. So, you know, I... Uh, and got I, you I, less I, girls? <laughs> well, yeah, uh, nobody's ever said that drawing comic books was a good way to pick up girls. You know, <laughs> even people who were making a lot at it won't say that. So stick with a guitar if that's what you're looking for. Uh, now, in high school, what did you do in high school? Did you take art classes in high school? I did, uh, but the curriculum wasn't really uh, centered towards drawing and painting. It was a ceramics class, so I didn't do very well in high school art just because it, it wasn't for my skill set. So did you pass or fail? Uh, high school? <laughs> <laughs> high school art class. Uh, I, high school, it, I don't really remember if I passed or failed art in general. I just didn't do well at art in high school at all. I was just... I've, I've never been a very good student. Now you've talked about before your comic books. Yeah. Now you started creating your own comic books. How old were you when you created your own comic book? I was in junior high school and uh, I used to draw them on notebook paper and I never could hand letter. I, I've never been any good at calligraphy so I would draw them out with the word balloons and then put them in a typewriter and type type in the dialogue. And then my dad would take him to his office and Xerox him. And uh, so that was my first published piece. Well, did the kids like wait for you to, to get those done and hand them out every Friday? Or how did that work? Both of them. <laughs> All two? <laughs> All two, yes. <laughs> yeah. Were they girls? If my mom counts as it's, a kid. You know, well, so. you know. Okay, so where did you go from high school? Did you go right into a college program or did you no, kind of uh, wander on your, your path with art? No, I actually, um, I didn't go to art school until I was 23. I left high school at 17 and I moved to Texas and was a carpet layer and uh, kind of bummed around for about five years. And uh, I was living in Florida uh, in Daytona Beach, and I built silk screens in a t-shirt shop, but that was significant because they had an art department. It was the first time I saw somebody being paid to draw and making a living sitting at a table drawing, and I was like, that's what I want to do. You know, they were inside, and uh, uh, but they were being paid to draw. That, you know, I saw that you could actually make a living drawing a picture, and so... I, uh, my mother called me and said, you know, I think I have a scholarship for you to go to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh. Are you interested? And I looked around where I was living and the guy next to me collected aluminum cans in the back of his El Camino and that was how he paid his rent. I said, yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll go. And so I had to sell my 10 speed to one of the artists at the shop for 40 bucks and got a bus ticket and Went back to West Virginia and I worked for a year for the state and saved up money and then went to school in 1978. What did you do when you were finished with? Did you go into commercial right away, commercial graphics? or I Actually, uh, I got a job in an advertising agency and 
I was not really suited for advertising. I just was, I was not a good graphic designer. I was a good uh, cartoonist and I was a good illustrator, but that can actually be a very small part, uh, very minuscule of what you do in an ad agency. So I wasn't suited for it, it wasn't a good fit. And uh, I ended up in 1986, I was hired by a department store chain to design the Sunday inserts that you get in your newspaper, the little tabloids. And I, that actually was a great job. Everybody I tell that says, thinks that that sounds horrible. But I was being paid to draw and I drew everything. You had to draw a lawnmower, you had to draw a baby carriage, you know, you had to draw uh, pots and pans. And uh, so for me, it was really great because I went in and was paid to draw every day. And in 1988, I was hired at an evening newspaper and as the uh, artist in their editorial department. So I didn't have anything to do with uh, the advertising department. I was strictly editorial. And that was really much more suited towards my skill set. That was a much better fit for me.